I also serve on the BYU Social Media Committee. I am a junior majoring in marketing management and minoring in computer science. Hi, my name is Jenna Anderson. I'm standing in for Brennan Staley today. I'm a program director for BYU YSERV organization, studying English and nonprofit management. And my name is Amberly AC. I do PR and marketing for creative services at BYU, and I'm also a vice president in BYUSA. Oh, and I'm from Mapleton, Utah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of background, uh, each of the panelists and I, we talked with tons of students around campus from different majors and, and different kind of entities, and hope, hoping to kind of just gather all of the issues and, and things that students have struggled with. And perhaps the most overwhelming response that we received was gratitude and a lot of positive feedback, actually. And so we'd like to just congratulate you and thank you for all of the, the time and effort that you've put in to your respective roles because students are really noticing a difference and they, they are really grateful. And when we mentioned this, this opportunity of, of having a student panel and a place that we could voice some of the, the concerns and challenges we faced, they were very appreciative. And, and even though we'll be talking about maybe some of the things that have been hard for students, we do want you to know that we are so grateful for everything that's been done and, and students really appreciate all of the technology on campus. Uh, and with that, we'll go straight into our questions. So at any given time, over 80,000 devices are connected to our campus network. Why is internet access so crucial for students today, and what can be done to improve it? And we'll give that question to Jenna. Yes, so there are some Wi-Fi dead spots throughout campus. This is especially problematic for students who are doing time-sensitive material. These dead spots are anywhere from the library to the JKB to classrooms with a lot of students also have this problem. The testing center also faces that in the lines. So that would help more students be able to access the internet if they had that opportunity. Perfect, thank you. Um, obviously, lots of students are relying on the internet, um, taking notes with, with programs like Evernote or Google Docs. Uh, and so having internet access widely across campus is, is always a, a pressing issue for students. All right, our next question will deal with Learning Suite, which is probably important and something that, that you'd all like to hear about. Uh, so Learning Suite has been a, a tremendous asset to the university that benefits, obviously, both students and faculty. And with that said, there's still some areas of improvement. What are some of the challenges facing students when using Learning Suite? OK, one thing that's been frustrating for a lot of students is Learning Suite uh, automatically logs you out after a certain period of inactivity, even if you're doing a timed quiz. And so a lot of people will lose points on their quiz or have to redo it and lose a lot of time. And that's incredibly frustrating for them. And so if that could be improved, that'd help a lot. Also, some of the students have said that having all of the quiz questions available at one time would help. There's been some glitches reported between clicking between the quiz questions, so if they could see all of them, that would help them do their quizzes. I, I mean, I think if, if you remember your test-taking days, sometimes when you sit down with a written test, a tendency for students is to look through and kind of check out all the questions first and kind of see where, which ones you want to tackle first. And I think what Jenna's getting at is um, when students are online taking a quiz, kind of a similar fashion to a paper test is kind of what they'd, they'd like to see. And Chris, did you have some comments to add? Yeah, so um, one thing I would really like to see as a student is maybe just a green, yellow, and red dot next to each assignment that tells me, you've already completed this, you're in the process of completing this, or you better start on this because you haven't even, uh, this is due tomorrow and you haven't started on it. Um, but th I think the biggest thing that would help students with Learning Suite is if all of their professors used it. I love how Learning Suite's schedule um, coordinates every class so you can see exactly which assignments are due when. But when professors use a different medium like Canvas or um, Brain Honey or, or other programs, it makes it hard because you have to constantly be switching between different websites uh, based on which class you're in and the, the schedules just don't mash up the same way. So I actually sat down to interview one of my professors who chose not to go with Learning Suite and he gave four reasons or four things that if they were changed he would switch to Learning Suite. Um, the first was he heard a lot of horror stories with midterms with students that uh, they started a midterm and it kicked them out, kind of we talked about earlier. Um, so just some, some bug issues. Uh, the second is that Learning Suite is not directly linked to BYU grades. And he said as a professor, he wishes that he could just directly um, upload the grades from Learning Suite into the actual BYU grades at the end of each semester instead of you know copying it for every student. Um, a third thing he said was a speed grader, which is where on when the professor's grading a paper written by a student, they see the student's paper on one side of the screen. On another side of the screen, they see a rubric 
that shows exactly which points should, they should allocate for you know which sections, and they can assign the the points easily that way. And um, the the third, or I'm sorry, the fourth the fourth change she'd like to see that would convince them to switch would be if after a student takes an exam on Learning Suite, we can already see the right answers for multiple choice questions, which is great. I really appreciate that as a student. Um, but we can't see any feedback on the essay questions. And on other platforms, including uh, Canvas, the one that he was using, you can see what the professor is looking for in an essay question. So when you scroll back through your answers, it would say, this is what I was looking for, even though it wasn't graded yet. And he said if those four things would, were changed, he would go to Learning Suite. Perfect, thank you. So those are some of the ideas and, and I guess challenges that some students have faced, and hopefully that's, that's helpful. We'll move forward with our next question. As of last year, there had been over 55,000 downloads of the BYU app, which is pretty incredible, and I'm, I'm assuming that that number has continued to climb this year. Um, and as our world continues to shift toward mobile device usage, uh, mobile apps have become especially important in the lives of students. So how can we improve the BYU mobile app to make it more conducive to student needs? All right, uh, so Learning Suite's already in the BYU app, but there's two things you can't do with it. You can't view your grades and you can't submit an assignment. And so if we could view our grades um, and submit assignments, sometimes they're just like little one word, senten one word sentences. Yeah, that's a real thing. A sentence, um, it'd be very helpful for students. Yeah, students also express the frustration that they couldn't print or register devices from the app any longer. And I, I'm actually pretty happy with the app. I think, um, I think one improvement I would make would be a map of where the printers are. Not so much for seniors or juniors, but for freshmen, it can be very frustrating when you have an assignment due and you don't know where the closest printer is. That's a, that's a great point that Chris brings up. One thing that students also kind of express frustration with is if they go to an on-campus printer and it, you know, it's jammed or it's out of paper, it's kind of that last minute scramble of trying to print out a paper to turn into class. And if they don't know where another printer is in close proximity with it, you know, within the building or a nearby building, uh, sometimes they, they're unable, you know, maybe due to their own procrastination, but they're unable to, to submit assignments on time. So maybe putting, like, like Chris mentioned, similar to the vending machine map built into the app, something that tells students where printers are, I think would be a great idea. All right, uh, next question. From the lens of technology, how can we improve the classroom experience and the class scheduling process? Okay, so one thing that we've talked a lot about, um, especially in BYSA as well, is there's so many services involved, uh, offered on campus, including like digital classes, uh, camera checkout, uh, all the things the library offers and how to do research. And so we think it'd be really beneficial if we could offer a one credit class for freshmen to take their second semester here, so during winter semester, and just have people come in and explain all the things that are available to them so that these resources are used and that students' experience here on campus could be more unified. That's great, Amberly. Um, it's kind of interesting because a lot of the benefits of technology seem to travel kind of word of mouth. And so by you know, your junior or senior year, you're typically aware of all of the technological benefits that exist on campus. But as Everly mentioned, as a freshman, you really kind of start with a disadvantage. And so something like a, a one credit class would really be beneficial for freshman students to kind of get them caught up with the rest of the student body. Any other comments? Yeah, just in addition, a lot of the students are interested in digital content. For example, I was sick with pneumonia and I was out of school for a week. And one of my friends recorded a lecture on his iPod or his iPhone, I think, and that helped me stay on track with the class. So if that were offered through the university through live stream or um, recorded lectures, that could help students who are facing illness or are unable to attend a class for whatever reason. So the digital content helps a lot. And something I'd really like to see, especially since we are registering for classes right now. As a student, when I register for a class, a lot of times I'm just short two credit hours of where I need for scholarship or for full enrollment. And I would love if we could filter classes by the days they're offered, by the time slots they're offered, and by credit hours, because that would really help me to find classes a lot easier. Uh, the way it's set up right now is I would have to kind of guess which, um, which area of teaching I could find a class under. And so I happen to know that student development has a lot of you know lower, easier, um, credit hour classes, but it'd be great if I could filter it other ways than just by teaching area. Another thing I'd like to see, and I don't know um, what the audience here could do as far as policy, but a lot of professors ban laptops in the classroom because they feel they're distracting. 
And as a student, I understand that when somebody in front of you is on Facebook or YouTube, it can be distracting. But um, I take all of my notes on the computer. I, I'm a native computer user. And so I'd love it if some classes could be dedicated to computer use, even for professors who don't like students using computers. Because for some of us, we just learn better that way. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, and our last question, we, we'd really like to just talk about ways to improve the, the BYU website as a whole. Okay, so talking to lots of freshmen, they say the BYU website's really confusing just because there's so many pathways and different routes to get places, and where things are located aren't always intuitive. Um, so that is their main complaint, <laughs> or question. Yeah. And with the campus calendar offered on the BYU website, it may help to have it be a little bit more comprehensive so students can click and get a more holistic view of what is going around on campus. I know that one thing that was mentioned last year at this panel was uh, basically a way to filter uh, like different calendar events. So say you're interested in athletics and you know, music performances, and that, that tool is now available on the, the calendar. The only issue now is that it's not always a comprehensive calendar, and so when you do select those filters, the things that you're looking for don't always come through. And so I think that's a great point. Obviously a big challenge because it requires a lot of support from so many different entities on campus. Um, but if there's a way that we could kind of rally campus-wide support in that effort, that would really be beneficial for students, especially for those trying to find their place and you know, connect with like-minded students, which is always an important part of student life. Any other comments, Chris? Yeah. Um and this is more of a, a layout issue, but with my BYU, I love a lot of the content that's included there. Um, and I really appreciate the fact that it was programmed to be customizable by students because we really do like to make things our own. But um, to be honest, 90% of what's on my BYU, I never really use or don't even want to see. The only things I'm really interested when I go to my.byu.edu is in the, the four sections in uh, communications, miscellaneous, school and work. Everything I'm really trying to get to is under one of those four sections. And having um, BYU Twitter and all the other widgets on there just kind of gets in the way. So it's, it's more of just a minor inconvenience, if anything else. But I think that would really help if my BYU just um, had those four sections a lot, um, you know, a lot easier accessible or right at the top. And then also, I know some students have had issue with uh, figuring out the device registration page and also the printer drivers. Um, if, those, if that was a little easier to get to. Uh, when you have a laptop, especially when you're a new freshman and you're trying to print off that printer and you're starting to get panicked because it's due in five minutes, um, it's, it's a little bit difficult to find where you even install the, the Pharos printer drivers. Um, but that would be my only suggestions. Perfect, thank you very much. Okay, well, well thank you for those comments. Are there any, any last minute comments you'd like to add? else. I think we've pretty much got through our material. So we'll, maybe we'll take a few minutes and just take any questions from the audience that you have. Um, let's go here with Todd. How do we get Well, first of all, Boosts aren't that great because everyone kind of just tries to run through as fast as they can through that area and <laughs> not get attacked by the flyer hand or outers. Um, yeah. <laughs> but one of the biggest things uh, I think is just like the BYU email because people do read those. And um, word of mouth honestly goes a lot way, a lot more just because everyone is not to be like, say students are selfish, but you're kind of just consumed with like, I have to do this and I have to get to work and I have to get all my good grades. And so like, unless it's like screaming at you, like you need to do this, we kind of don't really pay attention at all, which I know isn't very helpful. But, um, so when we get an email from the university, it's like, oh, we need to pay attention to that. And then again, just the word of mouth really helps a lot. And one thing that I would add is, I don't, I agree, I don't think booths are as effective, but I think the courtyard area is very effective especially when there's free food. And I understand sometimes budgets don't allow for that. But if you have a big sign that tells me in one or two bullet points everything I need to know, then I can glance at it and just go on. But that's how I learn a lot about campus events is where there's just a big sign in the courtyard. I know I avoid some events sometimes if they're expensive also. So <laughs> yeah. 
if I don't know if that's a possibility, but cheaper events I definitely am more prone to attend. Great points. Um, the only thing that I would maybe add to that, students really value their time, and so I love the idea of just making any messaging or flyers very efficient, so you know, one glance you can really understand it. Uh, and maybe the next thing that I would, that would say is, it's, it's hard, we're bombarded with a lot of amazing opportunities. And it, I almost feel bad saying that that's an issue, but there's just so many incredible opportunities around campus that sometimes it's difficult to sort through so many things. And so, um, kind of similar to what they said, looking for ways that are maybe more original or creative to promote events um, is an easier way to, I think, get our attention than the generic flyer that we receive multiple of every day. So, hopefully that'll answer your question. Uh, and then one in the back, let's, let's take that question. How do you do that, though? Because I spent, I, I, I'm a computer programmer, so I'm not saying I'm an expert on it, but I, I do know quite a bit. I couldn't find it. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that. So maybe, so maybe the issue then is how do we let students be aware of some of the, these amazing off offerings. We may have even mentioned things that already right. exist. Can you maybe give us an example of something that would be a new or exciting product? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, think of one right off, right off the top of your head. Um. I mean, like, are you saying, like, the BYU app, something like, like... Like, is it more important to you to, like, you know, improve my map? Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> makes me um, to improve my map or improve Learning Suite or to just come up with some, like, I can't even think of that. Yes. Like adding and dropping classes from the mobile app. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Would you rather so, improve my map or be able to add, change your schedule on perfect. your phone? So, man, we're and we're <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, like, we're done. I guess let's um, see that. Like, <laughs> that. That is a great question. So basically, where would be a better place to spend your time? Yeah, where would be a better place to improving spend time current budget? products or kind of introducing new something new? Yeah, great question. I think it'd be better to maintain my map just because people generally do their schoolwork on their computer. And so I think it'd be better to improve everything on the computer first rather than the app. Yeah. I would second that just because it's what we're used to. So we already are using those things to register or we're using the app. So anything that works with something we already have is a little bit easier for us to acclimate to. And just to echo that, the, the biggest concern students have at the beginning of the semester is the learning curve of new software. Because a lot of times we'll lose points because we don't understand exactly how it works or we think we submitted something but it didn't. And I think the same goes with, um, with any kind of school software. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the, thing, the only thing that I would maybe add to that is maybe in making that decision of how to allocate time, just take into consideration um, what is most pressing for students you know, printing assignments, submitting assignments, how are they spending most of their time? And if they need a new, you know, app or feature that would support them in, in where they're spending the most time, that'd be helpful. But I think, like the, the panelists have said, most of our time is spent on these kind of existing programs. So just continuing to improve those would be helpful. Um, let's go here in the front. Great question. I would probably say viewing my grades on the app because usually when I'm thinking about that, it's kind of when I'm having a little bit more downtime or I'm like, oh, I don't know. So if I could pull out my phone and check, that would be great. Um, how about you? I would, I would say the Wi-Fi um, just because especially in the large classrooms, it's, it's hard when the professor's pulling up PowerPoint slides you're supposed to follow along with and you're not able to. Um, and some, not all computers have the same Wi-Fi capabilities or chips or strengths. 
Mac computers get on a lot easier, but all uh, those students using PCs have a harder time following along sometimes. For me, I think the learning suite schedule changed would be really helpful just because most professors have starting dates and end dates for assignments. So when you look at the whole calendar, you can't figure out when your assignments are due. So uh, I tried to import all of them into one calendar and I just could not figure it out because it was like, this is due, this is due in like two weeks, this is due in two weeks, but it's every day it says that. And I just can't figure out when to hand in my assignments. So if I could get one holistic calendar, I'm like, bam, <laughs> there's my homework, there are my due dates, then I, because I had to make my own so many times by hand, that would have saved me a lot of time and make my work more efficient, I think. Great, thank you. I think I would probably second the, the Wi-Fi. If you were to talk to students, that, that's probably the biggest thing. And obviously, it's kind of an ongoing battle, uphill battle. Let's go right here. Okay, so we touched on this a little bit earlier. We have a lot of really cool services that our, college, our specific college offers. How and, do we tell you about them? And what is specific college I, I work for the College of Engineering, okay. so we have a lot of specialized services for engineer, en engineering students, like remote software and whatnot. Man, let's get some engineering, engineering students in the business school. That's we, great. <laughs> How do we tell students about those, besides offering free pizza and saying, come to our little <laughs> seminar? And, you, know, you, you mentioned, you know, OK, you, you should have all the freshmen take a, a two-credit class this their, you know, their second semester. Because we get seniors that come in, oh, I wish I would have known about this when I was a freshman. Oh, oh, this would have been so useful. How do we convey that to you? We have a, doc a website full of all this documentation and nobody reads it. We have YouTube videos and those, those have been helpful. But what, how do we tell you about all this cool stuff we offer? <laughs> big, big sign in the courtyard. <laughs> no, I think, that's a, I think that's a great question. And, and as, you, as we kind of voice some of these concerns, many of you are probably sitting there thinking, uh, that already exists. Right. So maybe that really is one of the big issues, is how do we get, let students know about these amazing opportunities? Panelists, what do you think? Well, I'm not an engineer, but if I was, it would be helpful, I think, to have my professors have assignments that use that, uh, those resources, because then I'd have to go and learn them. And then once I was in that database or whatever, I'd start exploring and looking at everything that was be offered. I think that'd be really helpful. Um, That's yeah. a great point. I know as a freshman, some of the, the courses build in, um, you know, using the library as a research tool, and you learn that that resource is available as a result of that assignment. So that is a great, great idea. Thanks, Amberly. Any other comments? I think sometimes colleges will use a newsletter. So anyone who's declared as engineering will get a newsletter that says, here are the six things going on this month you need to know about. And I found that helpful. Another thing you might want to consider is working through freshman mentoring just because they do meet with the freshmen all the time. And if they're educated on those opportunities, they can say, hey, you're considering engineering. There's all these awesome opportunities. That might be an option. Okay. And just to echo the, the course assignments, I think that's the easiest way, especially early on in the program, to require them to use the tools. One thing that I would maybe add, there are lots of clubs. I, I'm, like, as it was mentioned, I'm a business student. And there are lots of clubs that help with career preparation. And maybe if there's a way to connect with club presidents and people who are you know, consistently training big groups of students to use some of these resources, maybe that would be something that would be helpful as well. Great question. I have Thank one you. more thing. Uh, so I'm a public relations major. And when you get into the program, you have to attend a two-hour seminar where they go through everything. And I remember when I went to my seminar, they went through and said, we have these for focus groups. We have all the learning suite on all of our computers, and they went through and li like said everything that we were going to be able to use through the next two years in the program. So I don't know if you'd do that for engineering students, but that might be a good place to show it as well. Great idea. OK, we maybe have time for one or two more. Let's go in the back here. Would you find yourself in this position to do reading with digital devices? What's your preferred device? Do you find yourself doing your reading on a laptop, a tablet or a phone most? Or what's your preferred device? Great, great question. I think I would guess that for most students, uh, it would probably be a laptop. But I don't know, what do, you, what do you guys think? Some students do have tablets, but I don't think that's nearly as widespread as a laptop. Yeah, Any I thoughts? prefer reading on my tablet, but not everyone has one, like she said. So that would probably be the preferred device, but is that widespread? I don't think so. My, my laptop turns into a tablet, and I really prefer using a tablet for that, but you know, like you said, not every student has a tablet. Perfect. And let's go with maybe one more question. Yes, here. Oh, thank you. 
you've gone to some time and effort talking to your peers uh, about feedback for this event, which we appreciate. Uh, I'd love to get access to that feedback if it's written down anywhere. And if not, maybe next time we do this, having, having that accessible would be fantastic. You really are our front lines, and, and we want to listen to what you're saying. Absolutely. We would be happy to, to provide that. And maybe something that we could do, we really collected this information just kind of talking to students, soliciting uh, via posts on Facebook. But if you'd like, we could maybe conduct just a student-to-student -student survey and give you those results, if that'd be helpful. Sure. We, we do have that collected already, though, and you're welcome to have some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you're interested, if you'd like that to be distributed via email, or we do have these kind of hard copies of some of the points we've discussed. So. I think that is about our time, so thank you very much. Uh, and again, we just we really want to, to thank you for all of your hard work and let you know that everything that you've done is greatly appreciated by students. And if we could just let them know how many great offerings <laughs> are going on and, and exist on this campus, I think that the entire student body would definitely benefit. So thank you very much. We appreciate all you do.